Well, there's certainly been a lot of news out of both AMD and especially Intel over the past few days. Uh, so much news that I wasn't even really sure what to comment on in a video, right? You could conceivably do about a dozen five to ten minute videos over the past few days based on the mountain of information streaming out of these companies. And though slowly I realized, well, really, though, half of those videos would just be like that thing I leaked was right. You know, like the Alchemist release date, which don't kid yourselves, guys. I know they say quarter one for notebook. I stand by it. Unsubstantial launches. There will be a couple token models. In reality, quarter two, the beginning of it is, you know, April is when Notebook Alchemist launches in full force. So, so yeah, but that's all I have to say about that. Otherwise, it'd just be like regurgitating things that have been leaked a while ago. Ultimately, though, what I decided is I'm just going to talk about what I think stood out to me most. And so, yeah, let's get into it. And of course, first, we're going to start with a subject related to Intel. And it's that statement they made saying they're going to ship over 4 million Alchemist graphics cards in 2022. I expect there to be a lot of probably misguided hot takes on these shipments for the year. So, and, and I expect the hot takes to be both either overemphasizing how many cards that is, because it sounds like a lot if you don't look it up, or underemphasizing the impact it could have on gamers. So let me clarify a few things or point some things out to you. So first of all, Note what I said earlier in this video. I know they're saying they're shipping Alchemist in quarter one, but the real volume starts quarter two. From that perspective, you would then go, oh, so, okay, that over 4 million cards is really being shipped in 75% of a year, or almost arguably, if you think of like most of it probably coming April and May, almost just two thirds of the year. So, Putting that into context, over 4 million cards in around two-thirds of a year, not a whole year. That's worth remembering. Additionally, I think people need to remember that Intel is going to focus on consumer laptop and desktop. Yes, I know that they've announced that Arctic Sound variant of the 512 execution unit model, but that's launching later, and I don't expect it to get nearly as much market share in data center as what AMD and NVIDIA would expect with a new lineup. And in fact, when I reached out to John Petty of John Petty Research, you know, what percentage of those shipments that we see reported every year from AMD and NVIDIA are to gamers? He said it was probably more around 80% or up to 90%. So 80 to 90% of the graphics cards shipped every year from NVIDIA and AMD. Those go to gamers, which is most of it. But again, think about what we're saying. Alchemist is shipping over 4 million cards, not in an entire year, but in like two thirds of a year. And most of it will go to the products we care about a little more than what NVIDIA and AMD would plan for. In other words, people that say that this won't make a dent in the market at all, I don't think that's true. But it is not like Intel is planning to take more market share this year than AMD holds. In reality, Intel is probably going to add between 10 to 15 percent volume to the market, which doesn't sound like a lot. But already we have AMD and NVIDIA graphics card prices falling. Already supply is certainly not caught up with demand, but it is catching up with it quickly. So you take the fact that AMD and NVIDIA have recently been shipping more cards than previous years, and then you add another 10 or 15 percent on top of that, I do think this will affect the market, especially, by the way, because I think Intel will maybe not front load their shipments, but mid load them. They will want to get most of those over 4 million cards out before RDNA 3 launches, because RDNA 3 is going to make a mockery of Alchemist. So if you need a mid range to lower high end card, in the middle of this year, I feel like that over 4 million cards, most of it launching then in a concentrated period, mostly to consumer products, is going to make a difference. Just don't expect it to save the market. There's no way around it. If you look at the data, again, from John Petty, you will see that NVIDIA and AMD combined will ship almost 13 million graphics cards in a quarter all the time. It's usually between 10 and 20 million. And so 4 million, even like two thirds of a year, it's not enough to make their like there's a tsunami of extra graphics cards. But I think there's a reason Intel isn't planning to take like a third of the market in one year. And I think it's best that we actually go back to my Battle Mage leak from December, where I pointed out that DG2 Alchemist is intended as well 
if you were being nice, you would say an architecture that is releasing without going for the high end or maximum market share as Intel perfects the drivers before Battle Mage is out. If you were being mean in how you describe it, you, you might say that DG1 was not even an alpha test and that DG2 is maybe like you're a late beta tester. That, again, that's not to say there will be stability issues, but that is to say that I don't think the cards will be fully optimized until the end of 2022 and they'll price it accordingly like GCN1 was but like GCN1 it will probably have some of that aging like fine wine situation going on and if they haven't perfected how optimized the performance is through their drivers yet they don't really see a point in going for the ultra high end and another thing I mentioned actually in that battle mage video is that my contacts were saying Intel was targeting top end performance with Battle Mage. Now, this again would on the surface seem to conflict with what Intel just said, that they're going for ultra enthusiast with Celestial. The way I actually interpret this information is they know that by the time Battle Mage is out, it's unlikely to be perceived as an RDNA 3 or Lovelace competitor, that it's really going to compete with RDNA 4. And so is there a point in saying you're going to take the crown if there can be delays and you're not exactly sure when it's coming out and if it's probably going to come out late 2023, then it's going to be competing with, well, it might take the crown for like a month before RDNA 4 and you don't know if there will be delays. That is what I believe that Celestial comment is. I think Intel knows that launching a Lovelace competitor, even if it wins by a little bit, a year after Lovelace is out, isn't going to make waves. And that at the end of the day, it's probably unlikely to comfortably beat RDNA 3, which I do expect to be stronger than Lovelace. And so it's actually kind of nice to see Intel stopping with this hubris where they're just like unquestioned leadership. We're going to have the best products in a few years. It seems like Intel's finally being a bit conservative with how they project their competitive performance, saying, look, Battle Mage might be able to take the crown briefly, but it's competing with what will be one-year-old products. Let's not double down on saying anything until Celestial is out, because a lot can change. And frankly, we need to stop underestimating Radeon and NVIDIA. Intel is realizing they do still have a lot to prove, in my opinion. But at the same time, they did prove some things having to do with Raptor Lake. And I want to talk about both the other things they talked about that stood out to me, AMD's competitive place in the market, because really, I don't think AMD needs to beat Raptor Lake. I think they might need to beat Meteor Lake with Zen 4 to feel comfortable in the lead again. And there's a couple of upcoming products from Intel that, well, I've got some, some new leaks and some new information on the other stuff. But first, an ad from a sponsor. I am proud to say that Vite Ramen is a sponsor of Moore's Laws Dead. The Vite Ramen Company is an American company that pays its workers fair wages and engineered a tasty, healthy, and cheap meal that you can cook in less than five minutes. And these meals just got tastier with their updated version three of their ramen recipe. Meals aren't really healthy unless you keep coming back to eat the healthy ones. And that's what they've done with these updates to version three. Now is the best time to order some Vite Ramen. So if you're busy, hungry, or just looking for a pre-made meal that isn't expensive, get some nudes sent to you. Click the link in the description and use the code BROKENSILICON to save 10% on your order. This helps me, this saves you money, and this supports a good company. Buy Vite Ramen today. So like I said before the break, Intel, I believe, realizes they have a lot to prove, and it's time for them to start showing more of their hand, stop making ridiculously arrogant comments, and if you have a product you can show, show it. And they did that with Raptor Lake. That is, you know, I first leaked a 24 core processor launching in the second half of 2022, which yeah, actually, I want to just leak some more information about that right now. Remember, I first leaked that it was coming sooner than I think a lot of people expected after also first confirming its general specs. I also want to confirm that the performance you can expect out of Raptor Lake is a 8 to 15% single threaded increase and 30 to 40% multi-threading increase, which doesn't sound like as big of a deal as Alder Lake, but Alder Lake came after the horrible Rocket Lake. It is actually a pretty impressive uptick just one year after Alder Lake launches, or actually less than one year, because based on what I'm told, Raptor Lake is launching late quarter three, 
not quarter four, and that is to desktop followed by mobile lineups in quarter four. And that Meteor Lake is expected to be, as I've said before, actually, another impressive uptick. Maybe not quite as big of a deal as Raptor Lake, but probably close overall and coming, again, less than a year after Raptor Lake. And so if you think about it, Zen 4 at best is probably going to launch close to Raptor Lake. And then about a half a year to three-fourths of the year, we're going to get Meteor Lake. That's another Raptor Lake increase. Zen 4 doesn't just have to bring a 30% improvement overall over Zen 3, at least in my opinion. It needs to do that in a way that beats Raptor Lake by enough that Meteor Lake doesn't just raffle stomp it later. I am not saying that Zen 4 is going to lose against Raptor Lake or even necessarily Meteor Lake. I'm just saying it does have its work cut out for it, and I just find it unlikely it wins at absolutely everything when it launches by enough of a margin to not have to worry a lot about Meteor Lake. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the overall situation with Zen 4 versus Raptor Lake and then Meteor Lake looks kind of similar in a way to what we're seeing with Rembrandt versus Alder Lake Mobile, where Intel kind of wins, but at the same time, you would say Rembrandt's a much more impressive SoC. And I actually want to talk about it here. So, so if you look at the Rembrandt reviews, you can see that, yes, Intel holds the mobile crown. But not by that much, considering they have 14 cores and AMD has only 8 big cores. AMD has definitely targeted a perfect level of efficiency that also brings much better integrated performance to the degree that I don't see the point, like I, I've said a while ago, of the MX550 and 570. I think that's going to be a tall order to even come close to Rembrandt, even the MX570, in a way that at least matters. But as impressive as Rembrandt is to me, we have to remember that it took a huge performance win over Intel in both efficiency and actual performance to ever start really taking real laptop market share. A lot of OEMs just choose Intel because, well, a lot of the times they're stronger and also <laughs> they're Intel. This is a question I had for some of my contacts. I think Rembrandt nailed its overall design more impressively than Intel. I'm not even really sure how 15 watt Intel is going to compete with this. And I asked them, well, is it perfectly targeted? Is Rembrandt going to do better? And I was basically told that overall, the status quo is probably going to remain the same. There will be some OEMs that just start using Intel a little more now, but none of them are going to ditch AMD. They like Rembrandt. It's perfect for a lot of their lineup. And there will be some OEMs that use a little more, but it's not good enough that it's going to take much more market share from Intel and laptop outside of the fact that AMD just has a lot of momentum in laptop that if you ask a mobile gamer for the past few years they've been saying buy Ryzen AMD has some mind share but I think it's mind share and momentum that will make AMD take maybe a little more laptop market share and they're going to need something way better in Phoenix to stave off mobile Raptor Lake and of course Media Lake because again keep in mind that Phoenix with Zen 4 from AMD that new APU it's going to have to be good enough to compete with Meteor Lake eventually, I believe. Although, I will say this. As much as I'm also told that Meteor Lake is following Raptor Lake in an aggressive cadence, I'm also told Zen 5 is coming possibly less than a year after Zen 4. So with that in mind, I guess we're just going to have to see. At the end of the day, no matter what, Raptor Lake and Zen 4 are probably going to launch in a similar time frame around each other and directly compete. And if Zen 4 wins, it will be short-lived a little bit if it's not by a lot, because I do believe Meteor Lake will launch before Zen 5. But I say I think, and that Zen 5 will still probably follow Meteor Lake in less time than Meteor Lake follows Zen 4. And so, in other words... I just think the next 16 months is going to be, at a minimum, even if AMD ends up winning, much, much, much more competitive than they've had to deal with for a while now. And I think people, well, they might be underestimating Zen 4's performance, maybe forgetting that it seems like it will bring massive IPC and a 10% increase in clock speeds with all cores boosting above 5 gigahertz for the first time from AMD. I also do think that the people that think Zen 4 is being underestimated are forgetting how many things Intel has coming in a short succession around Zen 4 and Zen 5. And so at the end of the day, I actually think this increased competition 
is very good news for us consumers. The number one reason being, AMD did kind of start milking a little bit with Zen 3. And I know this is when a bunch of people, or at least some people in the comments will get mad at me and say, hey, they charged a fair price. I'm, I'm not saying they didn't. I'm not saying charging $800 for an unprecedented desktop 16 core that Intel couldn't touch was unfair. But I am saying it definitely had pretty dang high margins on it compared to Zen 2. And I just don't think AMD is going to be able to get away with that anymore. That what we're going to see is leapfrogging. It's going to be like Raptor Lake Zen 4, Meteor Lake Zen 5 in about a 12 month period, all four of those. And neither company is going to be able to go ham with pricing. And that's going to be a nice reprieve after graphics cards also start becoming more available. And I'm excited. I really do think competition is here to stay. And I do think in late 2022, we will look back and say, it's been a good time now. It's a good time to build. And don't kid yourself. Intel showed off a lot of other things recently, including Sierra Forest, which is actually kind of funny. I actually had this on my whiteboard for a long time here. SRF. That was Sierra Forest. And they confirmed some details about it I hadn't said yet. And oh well, that was one of those products that I was told by a couple sources, please say nothing about for a very long time because it is it is one of our aces up our sleeve. But I will say that I can point back to a recent leak of mine about half a year ago where I made it very clear that it wasn't just some normal thing following after Sapphire Rapids or Emerald Rapids, that it was an entirely different beast. And that I will say to right now, it's going to have more little cores than you probably expect it to. And it does a lot more than just pack a ton of little cores. But again, I promise not to say much about that one. So we'll just leave it at that. And I will also leave you with another little fun nugget. I'm aware of a lot of upcoming lakes. No, not just Arrow Lake, not just Lunar Lake. And I'm not even talking about Nova Lake. There's a couple other lakes coming after Lunar Lake that when they say and beyond, they're talking about the fact that in probably a two-year period, Intel's got multiple design teams going crazy right now with that Royal Core project I talked about. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if Nova Lake or one of the other lakes I'm aware of gets canceled. They're trying out a lot of different things and a lot of different teams, and there's going to be some revolutionary architectures coming soon. Not just one, but multiple. So... A lot of stuff to look forward to, and yeah, I guess that's what I have to say from the recent news from this week, at least right now. Of course, in the upcoming news episode, me and my brother Dan will be talking about all of it. We have another episode coming with a eSports expert and venue manager who manages global things for that huge competitive space. If you were a patron, you got to submit questions to him about how that industry works. And if you're a patron, you'll get it early and ad-free in addition to an upcoming die shrink that only patrons ever get. So remember, if you can support Moore's Law is Dead, we can always use the extra support for me, Gerard, Dan, and hopefully an expanding team soon. And otherwise, to everyone else, well, thank you for watching. <laughs>